Hey guys, how's it going? Kapan here. So today I had a pretty amazing game of Arena, and it was one where I really got to demonstrate my ability to play Hearthstone. And how about that? Very often, um, the obvious play uh, is the wrong one, and it's actually somewhat difficult to figure out the play that may lead you to win the game, specifically rather than you know, just holding on and eventually losing the game. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before. I've talked about, you know, making the game-winning play versus, you know, playing not to lose. And there's a very distinct difference. And I feel this is what really separates um, a lot of players in Hearthstone. So today we're going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to really demonstrate this point for you guys. I'm going to show you guys the game. And when it comes to the turns that I feel it really makes a big difference to turn the game in a specific direction, I'm going to pause the game and I'm going to talk about all little options, all little factors at play so you guys can really understand how you really can steal some wins from opponents with significantly better decks. Check out the clips, and I'll see you guys in a sec. Rogue's a bad matchup, but we've won two of them already. So I don't know. Whatever, I guess. Just hope we don't get scrubbed. Getting scrubbed sucks. Looks like we're getting scrubbed. Oh, what the fuck? It's not too far off. Mini scrub. Scrub Junior. Discounted scrub. So many what? What? Got sapped. Six zero? Do you guys know how fucked we are? At six zero, the guy sapped a two drop when he could deal with it with a hero power. That means the rest of his deck is absolutely ridiculous. Deadly poison. Okay. Going for it. Sorry about that. Yeah, the top deck sabotage is a pretty big deal there. We're losing this game quite heavily. But we're 6 and 0, I mean. The chance of this deck going 12 and 0 is basically none. Absolutely none, so. So this is the first, like, very, very important turn. Um, if you look at the board, very often when you just see the board, you see your hand, you know, this seems to make sense to play here, this is mana efficient, and very often this is how Hearthstone is played. But, um, you know, 
in this situation, it would seem like, you know, he has a 5-2 creature, you have a 2-3 creature, you use your 2-3, you kill the 5-2, and oh, you only have 8 life, so you kind of want to play some stuff that results in you not dying, so you should probably play Lord of the Arena. That makes perfect sense, right? Well, it seems like a pretty standard play, but you have to understand that if you play your Lord of the Arena, it's going to die immediately to uh, his weapon and his dude, then you're still going to be at 8 life, and he's still going to have board control because on 8 mana he's going to play something bigger than your 3-3. Three, three, and that is going to hit you. And if you can't death it, if you can't deal with it, you're just going to lose. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit of a problem because it's, it's really hard to stabilize. And the main way that you stabilize in Hearthstone is um, you either threaten lethal constantly, which obviously we can't do because he's at 21 life and we have... 8, soon to be less, um, or you put a taunt that just eats up most of their board. And uh, right now, because a lot of that is concentrated in the weapon, the 4 attack weapon is really the key here, um, I think the game winning play is to maybe take a little bit of damage, because we're, we're going to take a hit anyway. Whatever he plays on his next turn is going to do damage to us anyway, because he kills the taunt with the board, right? So we're going to take some damage anyway. I, I thought we will take the 4 damage, we do the 2-3 into the 2-1, so we'll probably stay alive for a couple turns, maybe we'll do some extra damage, and we can death the 5-2. And if we, if we do the death play, we can actually play 2 minions. So at the end of the turn, he will have no minions and a weapon, and we will have 4 minions. So yes, of course, he might have something like Blade Flurry, which might make us really, really sad and cause us to lose the game. Uh, he might have a card like, uh, oh, I don't know, Eviscerate, and might lose the game. But, you know, you got to take these risks at this point, because if he has those cards, you're basically dead anyway, right? Like, if he had Blade Flurry, the taunt play would still lose. If he had Eviscerate, the taunt play would still basically still lose, because whatever creature you play will get the attack in, plus the Eviscerate, you're dead. So, you know, the game-winning play here is, is actually fairly clear. It's the flood the board and stop him from taking control. That's, that's the only way we can actually push for a win. If next turn he plays like a really big minion, then we can play the taunt. The taunt is also effective against a bunch of small minions. So in either case, it really sets up a situation where we actually take back control for the first time in this game. Even though it wastes to death, it is the play that applies the most pressure, and Rogue is one of those classes that often can't deal with it. I want to stabilize with an active taunt. If I play the taunt, he'll just kill the taunt, and then whatever else he plays will go through. Yeah, that's a problem. Remember, kill to loss. We must cleanse the sun well. We're dead to eviscerate. Why do I have to taunt? The taunt prevents two damage. The frost wolves stand ready. Does it look like I need to prevent two damage right now? No, I don't think so. Is that, is that like conceal or something? Ah, this oh. Is this guy has a return spare part, I guess. Alright, so things are looking pretty bad, um, but we've, we've learned a few things. He has an SI7, and um, well, in addition to that, he doesn't have a 2-mana card, because he would have played the 2-mana card, SI7, uh, that's 5, 
and then six to uh, spare part him back, and then nine mana, which he had his total to play him again. So he doesn't have a two drop minion, he no longer has a spare part, and he has an SI7. So because he has an SI7, and he probably has a card with seven or less mana among the other three that he's going to have next turn, we absolutely have to heal this turn. So um, if, if we have to heal, uh, what can we do with the rest of the mana? We can shadow form and try to uh, do something, but is that really worth it? So it seems like there's there's a few things here that we, we obviously have to do. So we have to take care of the Cobra because we are going to have to play the Taunt. So we play the Taunt, we have to kill the Cobra with one of the three two creatures. It doesn't really matter which one. I guess if we get like a spare part to return, we can make decisions, but it doesn't really matter. I think maybe the Shadow Sun is worth a little bit less than the Shrink Meister, but whatever, that part doesn't really matter. We, we kill the Cobra with one of our dinky dudes, and we play the uh, Lord of the Arena, and we heal ourselves. Um, now, we actually have another option at this point. So we can kill the 5-5 five five with the 3-2 and 3-3, three, three, uh, which will leave us with the 4-2 and the Lord of the Arena on the board, which is pretty good, pretty good. But because we would basically be at two life because the SI7 goes through the taunt, uh, it makes it so any card that he draws, a silence, an assassinate, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, is, is gonna kill us anyway. And in addition to that, any kind of damage is gonna kill us anyway. So. By, by attacking to the creature, all we really do is temporarily seemingly prevent an instant death from like assassinate or silence. But, you know, if he gets like an assassinate or silence, we're basically going to die anyway because we're just going to be left with a 4-2 on the board and he can easily kill that with an SI and then we basically have absolutely nothing. So, the case here, the only way we're going to win this game is actually to take a little bit more damage, as it turns out. Um, I think the only way to win is to make the trade into the Cobra, of course, heal ourselves, of course, and of course play Lord of the Arena, but actually sacrifice the Lord of the Arena to the 5-5 five, five creature, because if we do that, we have 10 damage on the board, we can get him to 11, and then he will trade the 5-5 five, five into our taunt creature, hopefully, and then he can dagger up and then he can SI so he can get us to one, but we won't lose. And then we will have the super sneaky lethal with shadow form because we'll have one over lethal if nothing in the board changes state. And with this type of play, we put the pressure on his next turn. So it makes it so he might actually consider to SI one of the creatures. And then, you know, with a little bit more life to work with, we can maybe actually start to do something. So yeah. I think that's the play. It's very risky, but it puts him on a one turn clock, which is huge because the longer this game goes on, the higher chances to lose because, you know, rogues get cards that do damage in Arena, as it turns out. And uh, on the other hand, it's a, very, it's a very sneaky lethal. People don't expect priests to be able to do additional damage, so let's give it a try. Let's get physical! Okay, I'm healing myself. This is the play here. So I'm gonna be at one. I'm gonna be at one, but if he has nothing else, uh, I'll win. And that's basically the only way I'm going to win. Because if I delay this game anymore, it's, it's like hopeless. The thing is, if I don't make this push, I give him like three or four turns, which is basically a guaranteed loss. If I make this play, it's risky, but I give him one turn. And top deck. So here we have another big decision. He managed to stabilize with the ri ridiculous draw from the sacrifice and the cult master draw being the taunt. Yeah, now we have another sludge belcher to deal with. If we deal with the sludge belcher just directly, um, we don't really have much. Um, the best way to really deal with the sludge belcher is... Oh god, it's like... The 3-2, and then we shadow form the 2 damage, the 3-3, three, three, and 
to that, and then whatever's left in the cult master, it's like a mess. It's like a mess. So we really, we really have to shadow form the cult master because if we give him, if we give him another another two draws, there's no chance. There's no chance we're surviving because he only needs one damage. He still has the SI in hand, and he can still hero power. So, um, yeah, we have to make a play again. The at this point, it's it's really really a bad situation, but we again have to play to, to win because if we play not to lose, their chances of losing are almost certain at this point. Um, so what what is that? We have to shadow form the cult master. So at the very least, we're investing five mana into that, uh, three to play the shadow form, two to activate the hero power, killing the cult master. Um, we can actually use the heal hero power before activating shadow, shadow form. So we can heal shadow form and then use the shadow form, the new hero power that we get again to kill the cult master. That'll put us at six life. But if we do that, we don't play the tall strider because that's two plus two plus three. That's seven mana. Tall strider is four mana. So the heal ourselves for two basically is in exchange for the lost tall strider. So that really puts it uh, very unfavorably. So I think I think it's pretty obvious that we have to play the the lost tall strider and take the risk that he doesn't again draw one damage. He didn't draw it last turn. He's not going to get an additional draw because we're going to kill a cult master right away. So it's, he really just has to draw it this turn. To make it happen so um, we're gonna have to do that we're gonna have to ping off the cult master and then we can trade the three the three three and the three two into the full belcher and the four two in, into the remaining belcher and doing so we have a four one and a five four but our hero power does two damage so he can't actually kill the uh, four one with his hero power which often is what rogues do because he would kill himself you know he's, he's at 11 so 11 minus 4 he's at 7 and that's that's the tall strider's damage plus our hero power so what we'll basically do even though he won't be able to heal after this turn um the game is ending very very soon regardless right but also for him to stay alive he's going to have to draw up again some kind of taunt creature or maybe he'll get lethal uh, but if he doesn't um, he has to play the SI to kill off the 4-1, and in doing so, we'll again have some additional turns. And maybe, if the other cards in his hand really suck, maybe we can pull out a win with the, uh, with the superior hero power that we'll, we'll very, very soon have. Um, that's, that's really the only play here. That's the absolute best. We put him again on a one-turn clock, and uh, he has the answer has to adjust his play because we're applying the pressure and well let's see how it turns out if i heal first i can't play the five four if i play the five four um I threaten lethal again, or he has to SI7 the 4 1. If I heal first, I have no chance of winning. Playing the most defensive way possible is just playing not to lose, which means you're just gonna lose. Right now, I am dead. <laughs> this guy's toast. Well played. Remember what I said at the start of the game? His sap meant he was a terrible player with just ridiculous cards? Fucking verified, alright? <laughs> 